Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And today Eric and I are going to tell you how we felt about the second season of The Tick. We're not going to do a full-blown spoiler cast on this, but Eric, I do want to talk spoilers a little bit sure. because this is the second season of a TV show. Uh, most of the people that are going to care to watch us talk about this have probably watched it already. So we can or spoil are season going one. To, um, say that again? So we can spoil season one? Yeah, but I mean, like, we'll give our quick thoughts on this, but I think we should go into straight up ter spoiler territory on this. Okay. Um, be because like well, you I said, said a little bit of spoilers. You're just saying full spoilers. Yeah. Spoiler yeah. warning. Yeah, let's just do full full, full spoilers. Lights. No, when I say a little bit of spoilers, what I mean is we're not gonna do a full hour spoiler cast. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, but I want to I want to hit the main beats okay. and actually talk about the show. Okay. Because most of the people that are gonna be interested to hear our opinions on it have probably already watched it and are gonna want to know what we think of the major development. Sure. sure so sure. I would like to talk about those because. Um, a lot of, yes, because a lot of the stuff that I have to praise and complain about are things that uh, will be annoying if I have to be vague about them. Sure. So, um, real quick, non-spoiler for anybody that hasn't seen the season yet or has not watched the show at all, um, writing remains as great as it does for season as far as dialogue and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it's plotted as well or, or as tightly or just... It's structured weird. Yeah. I feel like this story, not necessarily everything that happens, but like this story should have been four or five episodes mm -hmm. and should not have been a whole season. This is either... It's weirdly too long even though it is it is cut down by two by, by two episodes. Or not even too long, it's just like it needs, it needs to be a 20 episode season because it feels like the first half of a season. This isn't... It, it's not big enough to justify its length. I don't like, think so either. I don't know if... But it ends as if it thinks it's an epic. Yeah, I don't know if this thinks... I'm not sure if it's confidence, or... I don't want to believe that Edlin didn't think he was going to get a second season. And they're like, well, what do we do now? It doesn't feel like that. But it also doesn't, it doesn't feel like super swaggery. But, like, if I had to read it, I'd say it feels like, well, we're going to get at least four. So, like, we can do a small story. The problem is, the small story was still a mystery. Yeah. And so the payoff for, for the mysteries... All of the mysteries were almost all disappointing. Yeah, and there were mysteries that the first season set up that I thought we would deal with that we did not deal with at all. And some of them that we dealt with from that first season were kind of lackluster how we resolved them. Yeah, that's what I think. So here's one of them. That's my disappointment about it. I am still going to fully, wholeheartedly recommend it. Uh, simultaneously, the it's last episode. Hilarious. Yeah, simultaneously, the last episode was. Kind of boring for the plot stuff, but we laughed out loud really hard twice. And like two of the best jokes are in the final episode. And you watched me lose my mind in, ex in excitement five minutes to be Yeah, end. yeah. Uh, and we will talk about that when we get to spoilers. Uh, but there is a thing that, as a Tick fan, I just lost my mind. It's about. good, not as good. Yeah. Uh, but I think the comedy is up to snuff. Except for one. Okay, but yeah. There, there, Except for there's, one there's, thing that doesn't work at all. No, you're absolutely right, but uh, I think for you, Superior probably makes up for most of that. Oh my god, um, I love Superior so much. <laughs> He's amazing. And I don't know, how, I didn't know how I felt about him in season one. He's amazing in season two. I think he's so funny. So we'll do best thing, worst thing real fast before we get into spoiler territory for folks that have watched the show. Um, my f my least favorite thing is just what we were talking about, that uh, some of the mysteries that are paid off are, are lackluster, and it doesn't seem to get enough done to, to warrant its length as a season. My favorite thing is the Tick Arthur dynamic. Uh, to, it's not the thing that, make you sque that made you squeal like a little girl? Uh, no, no, I'm not going to call that my favorite thing. Uh, especially because I don't know how they're going to handle that moving forward. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, yes, I'm very excited about that. Uh, but part of that is because I was hoping for some more, like, uh, major tick comic canon stuff, and I didn't get it through the season. So when I finally got something, uh, I mean, I will... I, I, will, I will spoil that. It is, it is, the thing I'm talking about is a thing that I'm familiar with, and I was very excited about that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, the, uh, the Tick and Arthur dynamic is wonderful because they're finally on the same page, and I feel like it's very satisfying getting to see them on the same wavelength after a whole season of uh, Arthur thinking that uh, Tick is a crazy person and not being sure if he should be around him, and it, at first thinking that he's part of his uh, imagination and all of that. Um, there is a... Uh, 
real believable progression that has gotten that has got us here, and they have earned uh, every bit of the of, of Tick and Arthur basically being in the status quo that I'm familiar with them being in. But I'm not used to seeing it earned like that. Mm. And uh, some things like that, it's especially annoying. in the comic. Yes, some things like that, it's annoying to get an origin for where it's like I didn't need that. This, it's very satisfying mm. uh, because. This for the tick is much more realistic and believable than we've ever had it before. So for Arthur to be such a fleshed out character and to have found his confidence again, you notice the eye twitch is gone. Entire mm -hmm. season he does not do that anymore mm -hmm. because he has found himself and he's still he's still struggling and he's not still not sure if he's going to be because able to get along. He's still like a little guy and everyone else has superpowers. And he doesn't know if he can make a living. Yeah. Uh, this show deals with that in a way that we never have before. Uh, Arthur doesn't get to just be Although, a superhero just drop it after that. I'm not sure if he's going to go back to work or not. Well, no, it's. I think we'll talk about that with okay, Rose. Okay. Um, what is, What is your best thing, worst thing? Uh, I mean, have we covered worst? Are we, we both in the same place you, there? You didn't do a worst. I did. Oh. I did. I started there. I said. Oh. I said my worst thing is all the stuff we were talking about. Oh, okay. About okay, the this, season this, yeah. not getting enough done yeah. and, um, and, and all of that. I, I opened with that. My my best thing is Superion. I I think Superion's funny. All like every like like like, like uh, at some point I just turned you on like. Every time Superior's on screen, I just I'm so happy. Like he's I'm never bummed he's on sad screen. Superman. And there's so much Superman stuff. And it's great. There's stuff that I thought about later where I was like, oh yeah, he's dressed like Man of Steel Superman. Uh, with I like the lumberjack out there. Yes! Like, like, that's great. He's doing he is doing Superman the way that I've never exactly seen him done before, which is more and he's sympathetic. Yeah. It's just more dumb and ponderous. Like he's not evil he just wants to be famous he's superman for the wrong reasons but not to an evil degree he just wants everyone to love him he only saves people so that he, everyone loves him and it's funny and he's because, hilarious it's funny because he just now realized what his motivations are right where it's like now that people aren't uh, liking him as much and like he freaks out because uh, anyone on Twitter complains about him. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, everyone is supposed to love him. And it, it's fun because it's like, Golden Age Superman status quo, suddenly modern Superman status quo, he cannot deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, all the parodies to Christopher Reeve are hysterical. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's... I, I feel like I had a worse... Oh, I'll say my worst thing is, this is a show called The Tick, and uh, The Tick just kind of gets like backburnered for most of it. I don't, I don't need everything to be about him, but, like, he almost didn't have to be in this season. There are no Tick plot lines. Not really. You're right. I mean, he's... You he's still funny. I'm, I still like him, but he's kind of... But he's burner. a supporting character on his own show, and that was true of first season, but Arthur needed to be the protagonist for that. They should be more dual protagonists, and mm. their dynamic is as if the story made them dual protagonists. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're right, there's not a lot where uh, I can see a lot of like thematic parallels between him and a villain or anything like that. Like, he is kind of sidelined. Mm -hmm. Narratively, he feels more like Arthur's sidekick. Yeah, and you, I, you can make the, the argument that he's kind of a plot device. Mm -hmm. Where we need him because he's, you know, uh, not invulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and Did because you like four or five yeah, because holes? Arthur can't get in, into Aegis mm -hmm. without, without him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but still, certainly feeling it. No, absolutely. And not right. a lukewarm Seinfeld. It's just that that first season is so stellar. Well, it's, it's, it's one of the best seasons of television I've ever seen. So it set up a real high bar. It feels to me the best way I can explain it is it feels a little bit like Buffy season four, which I go to bat for and fight everybody on Buffy season four. Yeah, me too. Because people are like, oh, it's so bad. I'm like, no, no, it's just the meta story. The rest of the season is good quality. Uh, like like a lot of those standalones are just as good as, as as season three or two. It's a little too experimental in its science fiction stuff. Mm. That was always my main issue with it. But it ain't five. No, no, no. So like, but I've always thought the problem with season four was the arc of season four, and that's kind of how I feel about this. Is I think most of it works. It's just the actual plot stuff I don't love. Uh, it just doesn't move fast enough, and then when we get to where it's going, it's not a good enough payoff for the for the slow burn. And it thinks it's more compelling than it is, mm -hmm. or that it's more exciting than it is. And I don't think when you finally get to the villain, I get his motivations, but the big thing I don't get is why he thinks that. Yeah, he's just a mouthpiece. I don't, and so that was disappointing. 
Yeah, especially because we have like a secret villain through the whole thing. I don't want to. I don't want to be a region fanboy and say that it has to be like a comic character that I'm familiar with. But when we finally find out who it is, n not only was it a letdown because of what you just said, but also uh, I wasn't that surprised by it. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. all roads were leading there, and so that's good. But it was it was almost predictable, mm -hmm. almost a little bit callable. Uh, so let's get into some spoiler stuff now. So uh, if, you, if you haven't watched that, there's there's 10 minutes of non-spoiler, or mostly non-spoiler, and um, now we'll talk a little bit of uh, about the specific things uh, that happened in the season. So um, the first half uh, of the season, the first five episodes, I'm going to say squarely the, the first five episodes, um, I'm so excited to click to the next episode. Mm -hmm. just, just every episode. And then we get midway through, and... The Lobstrucule stuff keeps going. Yeah. And I go, oh, I thought that was just like kind of your opening gambit and then we were going to move past it. No, that's the season. I was a little bit disappointed with that. I'm not saying that that's not a good. She's a good bait and switch. Mm. She is. Uh, I didn't call that. I didn't call that she was going to not be a villain and be a, and, and, and be a sympathetic but character. I, don't need I to, liked to her. Arthur do for the rest of the season being taking care of her babies and finding her babies. No, that's the problem. If she if she was just in prison and they were trying to like that was a that was a, a like C plot like and we're also trying to get her free. Fine. I don't need her to just be gone. But I didn't need the entire season to be them trying to deal with her babies. Yeah, and I, I think the idea there was supposed to be using uh like super powered people and uh like like not squarely human people as like the X Men metaphor. Like I think I think we were doing that whole thing. Mm. And it's a little overdone, and also, haven't these people been around for a long time? Like, Aegis is a regular Well, not just that, but, like, we know from season one that, like, because of Su Su Superion, like, Superion's been here for at least, like, was it, like, 200 years or something like that? When does he first drop? Is it earlier it's than eight, that? It's 18-something. Okay. Or 19-something. But, yeah, it's, like, it's at least 100 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, this has been for a while. Yeah. Uh, and, like, like the, the big bad guy plot is, he's kind of an X-Men villain. Yeah, no. Yeah, not. Ah. So we'll we'll say we'll say here. I'm jumping around. Sorry. So so the the bad guy's John Hodgman, uh, who I love. I was really excited to to see in this. Um, and I kind of wish they just left him as a maybe slightly twinged evil like Q. Yeah, he's just a scientist guy. Making that's him the villain. Kind of morally ambiguous. I don't know about like I was re like part of me is really excited that he got to do that. Because um, it was a bigger role. Yeah, it's a bigger role. He's not just like a cameo thing. Like, he got to be the villain. But because he's a human, like, more than maybe I've ever seen before, like, at the end, he's holding a gun, and his and uh, Miss Lint runs away, and he's like, oh, I can't do anything now. Like, he had nothing. Like, I think that's part of what made it so lackluster was like, and then when we finally got there, and the climax is nothing. I think the big surprise reveal... I I think it's supposed to be an anti-modern cynicism thing. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I respect it for that, but it didn't resonate with me like I, like I wish it did. Mm -hmm. I think the big surprise revelation at the end is supposed to be the big evil government entity is not big is not a big evil government entity. It's that it's one bad seed and there might be issues here and there, there's bureaucracy, but overall it's not corrupt, and we actually can trust it, and isn't that refreshing? I like that, except that's not what they set up in season one. No, it's not. Unless there is something else that we are building to that we don't know about. and Or unless the idea is just supposed to be, it's that guy controlling the drones, and that's it, but it's not, is it? No, the terrorist says he were, he's trying to take it back, and he's been doing this for a hundred years. What is he taking it back from? Yeah, uh, maybe maybe he's talking about that line that Tara has at the very end, where where, uh, where where he tells Arthur, "I'm not trying to rule the world. I'm trying to take it back from who? What are we talking about? What is it?" And and what I said earlier in the non-spoiler uh, portion that I want that there were major uh, revelations set up that I was expecting to get the season. That was the big one. Where is that? Well, if I remember correctly, we like cut right from that to like the drone. And you're like, oh, they're yes. watching. Yeah, and those like, seem to be related this. things. I, I and don't I mind the bait and switch as bad if I'm not set up with the terror. Yeah. So I want to believe that that is unrelated. That the terror is not talking about ages. Yeah, Aegis. but I, Aegis, I don't trust that the show at this point. I hate them. I hate that I'm saying this. Pardon me. I don't trust that the show 
knows what he was talking about and will ever tell us at this because point. Because we also dropped the Tick and Arthur light stuff. That's part of it, yeah. When we, um, but 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 also just maybe all, like maybe they put that line in there to to uh to make us uh leery of Aegis, and then it's a cheat, and we'll never get back to it again. Mm. I don't know. We'll find out. I mean, may, may, like I don't know if we'll ever get back to the terror. I don't know if we'll ever see either. him again. I thought he desperately needed a scene. I do too. But. And like, but if they weren't gonna deal with what he said, or they've retconned it, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, he's still in ice. Like, maybe you don't want to bust my ice just to be like, you know, AC. Yeah, you don't want to be like Gotham. Yeah, with yeah. Riddler. You remember yeah. that? We're yeah. just two episodes later. Yeah. He's, he's he's already back out of the ice. Yeah, but at least he was then like, um, I could, went back to being a main character, which was annoying in a different way. But like, <laughs> like true. if you brought, brought Terra out of ice, and then I guess they could have dethawed him before he went to prison or something. Like, I don't know. Uh, but yes, with the nightlight thing, um, that is frustrating uh, a lot because uh, I, 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 I did a lot of speculation the last time we talked about this on video about uh, what uh, what the deal was with uh, the Tick and Arthur seeming to be joined at the hip and connected somehow. Arthur seems to be uh, the linchpin for the Tick's entire existence. It's like the Tick didn't was literally born yesterday in first season, and somehow he is like he doesn't remember anything past. Uh, like like the last few hours and oh yeah he he's says he thinks he's a robot and yes he's... yes and it, but but he says early on the second episode uh he says that when Arthur's not around he gets confused he gets all fuzzy headed what is that about why are we not talking about it and when we uh did the costume switch for the second time uh at the beginning of the season I thought that was the beginning of us maybe dealing with it and no it's just them uh being kind of clever and fun in addressing the fact that they want to keep changing the costume, it might not actually mean anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's driving me crazy, but like I, are, they made it pretty plain, I thought last season, that the nightlight thing with Arthur right around when his dad gets killed and he, he, he has a blue nightlight and he hears the tick talking to him, that that's not him dreaming a past that didn't happen. I thought that was supposed to be real. Like, a thing that happened. Mm. Although, Arthur, what are you going to do? We've not called back to that at all. I, I was, It was weird not to get that line at all this season, because that's been a real big through. Um, mm. I don't know. I was frustrated not to get anything about that stuff. Now, maybe we'll pick up on it third season, but give me at least more clues. Mm. Uh, and, and Let us know you didn't forget about it. Yeah, because I don't trust it now. Mm. So that that's a thing I'm frustrated about, uh, and it just feels not as tightly plotted because of that. the The overarching plot for this season, they know what they're doing. It's 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 tight enough, but the two seasons together, it does not feel like the ongoing narrative that it was. Mm -hmm. uh, as it's 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 not as it's not as good as that. As that. And I and I feel like there are little places where they cheat. Can I, can I throw out a nitpick real quick? Sure. I don't like spoon at the end. No, nope. I don't like it. Uh, why isn't Why doesn't he say that before? I mean, like we set up Spoon. Do you remember that? Yeah, he's like looking at Spoon. Yeah, first season we do set that up. I uh, if that's going to be his battle cry, it needs to come from that and be looped in and not just at the end. It feels tacked on, like oh yeah, that's right. Spoon's a tick thing. You know, it's like the Avengers Assemble thing uh, at the end of Age of Ultron. Mm. Like it's just an afterthought. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So just little things like that uh, it, it make it feel a, a little sloppier than it was for a season. Because that season is just so, uh, again, tight and uh, smartly written and, it, like, I don't know, do they need time off or something? Is, is it one of those things where it's like, we're, we're just, we, we had to maybe rush it a little bit and we're not, because they had a little bit more time last well, time. Well, but also, like... If it's if it's a thing where it's like well well we have big plans but we don't want to rush into it we don't want to just immediately go and and here's all these big things we want to do and we set up some big things at the end of the season but this season doesn't feel like it's actually concerned about any of that stuff like if we, we if, if they just want to do like a cool down season they want every season to be the most big epic thing we want a smaller season yeah but it then doesn't do anything to communicate to me that yeah but we're st we're still building the things. Mm -hmm. Everything we were building to is paid off and not super great. So that segues us to Walter. Yes. 
Who's just an agent? Who, yeah. Uh, my prediction was I was half right. I was right that he was an Aegis agent. I don't know that part. He'd be like a retired founder. I thought he was going to be one of, if not the founder of Aegis. Partly mm -hmm. because he's the founder of the Dharma Initiative in Lost, and when he suddenly uh, freaks out on those guys at the end of first season, and uh, he's got the martial arts skills and everything, um, it, I, like like I thought they were going to that kind of place where like this guy's important, like he's he's interwoven, and and, and, and I, like I thought he was going to be our Nick Fury, mm. and uh, he's not really. And no, that's Tyrannosaurus Wrathbone, who is awesome. Uh, he's hysterical. Yeah, uh, I love that guy. I don't know how I feel about him being as altruistic as he ultimately is, uh, but you know, I kind of like that. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's got his bike whole heart, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, because uh, it's amazing. But um, what do you? But but I I want you to talk about your identity issue with him. Okay, because I think I'm with you on it. So we find out that Walter isn't actually Walter. He's John John's, Woo. That's my John, John Woo, which is really he's, funny. He's, he's John Woo. Can you give him that? That's pretty funny. No, no, the, the John Woo's really funny. <laughs> the problem is that he because the second he like clicks over to John Woo mode, all of the like, because like Walter felt like a real drawn character. And then it all goes away. With the feet away. thing, and with the he can't stop and, by. And like, he takes too long to say anything. He's obsessed yeah. with... Uh, oh, you know what? Sorry. Um, I don't know that that really explains his obsession with the dog from the Flag 5 that well. Because, like, yeah, he's connected to Aegis, which no. is a superhero organization, but... Yeah, it's like he's playing an idiot there. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah, but... So, like, he, he becomes an agent, and, like, I'm fine if it's the... Um, Ash from Evil Dead thing. Like, Ash is an idiot, but the one thing he's good at is killing, is killing monsters. Like, Ash can kill deadites. I'm fine if, like, he can switch into spy mode and, like, do all that spy stuff real cool, but then immediately jumps back to, like, talking forever. Once he switches over to John Woo, he's a completely different character, and we never get glimpses of that other one. Now, maybe it's just the scenes he's in, but after that point, after the John Woo reveal... He never talks too long. He never talks about feet. Like, all those character ticks are gone. And I get that he's in a heightened situation, but, like, we don't get, like, a, a stinger at the end or anything. Not a stinger, but we don't get a, we don't get a uh, uh, like, resolution scene at the end where he seems like he's still, like, he's back to... It feels like... It's just a Clark Kent thing, it seems like. It seems like he's just playing the bumbling fool, but if he's and retired, how come? And that's... Drama with the um, mom. Unless he, yeah, unless because the idea who is, I who I've been with, who I love, he's, is a lie. It, but if the idea is supposed to be, because I can see both sides. Of it. If the idea is supposed to be, but you're you're laying low and you don't want anybody to know that you were an agent, then like you play up. I think the idea is supposed to be that he's just playing up a uh, persona that he's created for all these years just in case the past came back to haunt him or something. I think that needs to be brought more to the fore because I was confused and not totally sure, like you said, about how much it was in his personality in the first place. And also, we don't get a good explanation for why he's brought back into action. We just say, yeah. hey, we need you. Yeah, yeah. He's retired. I don't think you call up retired spies and just be like, hey, we need you for a mission. Because it's just a mission. It's not like... He, it needs to be... It's not like everyone like, else is deployed or dead, right? Or or you're the only one I can trust. Like, if he knew there was a mole, and he's like, I know I can trust you because you've been out of the loop. Now, I'm not bringing this up as a good example, like I like this movie or anything, because I don't, but it's it's not like an Agent K and Men in Black 2 situation where only he has the information. Mm. It, there, there's not like a special thing that only Walter can do. No, he calls him up and it's just like... It, it's as if he's an active. It's like spy kids. It's, it's like as if he's an active agent. He just has like all these sp hidden spy technology. And all they yeah, had to do weird. was make him an active agent. Yeah, that's all they had to do. Yeah. It's just all these years he's been doing stuff for ages. It just still ends up being weird with the mom where how where, where they want to go with it because they want to keep them a couple. But like if that's not who he is, then that's she's been really hard married to, deal with. to a lie this whole time. And mm -hmm. like uh, Dotton. Arthur, but especially Dot, should have a hard, uh, harder time accepting that. And, like, Dot does have a hard time accepting it at first, certainly, but by the end... Uh, Everyone's just fine with it. They're kind of too fine with it, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't know. I took issue with that. It did feel like they wrote themselves in a corner and they weren't really sure where to go with it, and mm -hmm. they didn't quite nail that. Yeah. Uh, they didn't stick the landing on that. That's unfortunate. Um, how do you feel about uh, where we're taking Dot? 
So here's the thing. I really liked Dot Season 1. I really liked Dot Season 2 until the last two episodes. All of a sudden, it's like something just changes and I no longer like her. And I think she becomes really unreasonable and really, like... Unreasonable with Overkill? With every... Like, out of nowhere, she hates Aegis. But for no reason. She just... Like, and it, it feels like she became like that with a bunch of things. All of a sudden, the last two episodes is like, all of a sudden, she, like, takes stands on things. Yeah. And I never feel like she has the information to take a stand, and it just doesn't feel... It feels like she went from, like, knowing what she was, and then, like, kind of trying to find herself, and she's still finding herself, but she's going to act like she knows what's going on. And she just feels less stable than she did pre previously. Well, and... Again, I think there's just stuff I'm not bringing up to the fore because what I where I thought we were going was that Overkill is a bad example. Mm -hmm. That that like he he's setting a poor example for her and she's um, being influenced in ways she shouldn't be. But, but they don't been, do that. We don't do that, and and the show has been playing that like an endearing couple. And I want them to get together. They have mm -hmm. wonderful chemistry. Mm -hmm. I was a little surprised there wasn't like a kiss th there wasn't something. a kiss or anything. They have a I, dance. I hesitated. I don't I don't think they do that. That mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. Yeah, they have the dance thing at the end. I mean, it is clear that she's really super sad when she thinks he's going to die and all that. Uh, if they don't actually get together in season three, I'll be very surprised. Mm. Hopefully we get a season three. We haven't got it announced yet. I'll be surprised if it doesn't get renewed. Mm. But, um, yeah, um, I'm with you. I think she's handled kind of sloppy by the end. Uh, my big question is why she has superpowers. Uh, yeah. That comes out of nowhere. And uh, we talked about this while we were watching it. The Tick is a place, and even this series, which is more realistic, but still very absurd. Mm. I don't need to know how everybody gets their powers. I don't need to know why Flexon is stretchy. Mm. I don't need to know how uh, the the uh, Doctor Strange stand-in guy... What is his name? I sometimes remember it, and sometimes I don't. I forget what it is right now. I, I it's it's, um, it's um, not coming to me. Anyway, um, but that... Uh, I have a castle list up here, but I'm not seeing it right away. Um, Wikipedia that, is terrible at updating it past the first season. Yeah. That guy, uh, I don't need to know how he got his magic powers. What's his name? I know, but I don't need to know how he got that. You know what I mean? Oh, he's born. Like, did he say that? Well, that's, how, that's usually how like mystic things... The point is, even if you know it, I don't even know it. <laughs> um, Dot didn't have powers, now she does... And Why I'm now? assuming something that happened last season gave her that, but they treat it sort of like a mystery at the beginning, where it's like, oh man, and she's got she's got these powers, and it takes her a while to figure out what exactly she can do. And like when she dodges that bullet, she realizes, I. Uh, but it takes a while that because Overkill tells her, no, no, you didn't just dodge a bullet. That's related to your uh, premonitions mm -hmm. that you were getting earlier in the mm -hmm. season. You're not super fast. You can just see things before they happen. You see things before they happen. Yeah. I. Uh, why does she have that all of a sudden? Yep. I it don't out remember any place where they where they talked about it. And maybe I missed something, but I don't think that ever comes up. Yeah, I don't think there's a thing like a Deadpool where like I assumed that like she was she was gonna have powers in the next movie because she's in that that thing that gave, that gave Deadpool his powers. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which by the way, we didn't do anything with. Um, I never thought they were gonna do that, but I did. And, um, and they did. But, well, they didn't, so I was right. Yeah, uh -huh. but but uh -huh. we. I don't remember a scene like that where like she's, like, exposed to, like, some kind of, like, radiation, or... I can't think of anything that would have triggered that. No. But I haven't... Well, I, I, I mean... No, I haven't really... Re, I haven't rewatched There's season that, one since the back half You have out. watched it twice, right? I watched the first half twice. Oh, but you haven't watched the back half. I haven't watched it. the back half. I've watched it three times, I think. Okay, okay, so you, 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 you would remember something like that. The only thing I can think of is there's that, there's that scene, there's that infiltration scene where... Uh, she and uh, Overkill uh, are like infiltrating and they run into Miss Lint and all that, but I, I don't think there's anything in that that would make that happen. I don't know. But I was just really surprised that there's not an explanation. Um, again, unless I missed something, I mean, we've only watched this through once. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do Can I talk about Miss Lint? I'm going to do another watch uh, soon, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Miss Lint's arc is a mistake. It's, it's one of two things. Either she's going to be a good guy and they don't want it yet, in which case you're wasting my time. Yeah. Um, now, you didn't call that. You called that she'd be a good guy. Yeah, but... but we don't actually know if you're right about that yet. I think the ending with her works way better if she's evil the entire time, but because of stupid government bureaucracy, no one can know who she is. Yeah. And then at the end, she just steals everything. She's like, yeah, I don't... I was never trying to actually be a superhero. Like, yeah... The this is the end game. It is that she's conflicted now because she's been playing superhero so long it's supposed to be that 
uh, kind of age-old thing of uh, she's starting to sympathize with the people that she's with all the time. And that happened real fast. I think it's too easy. I don't think she actually spends enough time with the superhero. I don't either. It, it, like, I think the idea is supposed to be that just like the fame is getting to her, where like people are um, praising her and calling her a hero, and that is making her um, feel heroic. And so she's like, I do like the, the 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 deal of well, I can get exactly what I want by just staying here and becoming part of the Flag Five and then yeah, becoming being, the leader being of the Flag. Pays. Yeah, um, and and then that whole thing about well, if I'm I, maybe it's a little bit contrived and a little too easy that she becomes the leader so quickly, but like because she's like, oh, I just become the leader of the Flag Five. I'll get everything I want, and then and and then that guy's like, and then here's how you become the leader of the Flag Five. Well, it, no, it's the bad guy hands it to her. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, I yeah. forget now. Yeah, because they have like an alliance thing. Because remember, she's supposed to help him out with the tick. And okay, well that's like, not contrived. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fine. Um, but, but then uh, it gives her unlimited access to Aegis, so she just steals everything, which I think is hilarious. It's yeah. set up right. As it is, it's a weird payoff where I'm like, oh, okay. So it's like Siler in season three of Heroes. We're like we're back and forth, back and forth. Oh, yeah. he's just he's still bad. That's great. Okay, yeah, it does feel like they're not totally sure what they want to do with her. Um, yeah, they they didn't want her to not be here, but they didn't know what they wanted to do or whatever they want to do with her. They can't do yet, so they just treaded water. And I also think that they're playing her as which is kind of what this whole season feels a like. little bit of a red herring. Yeah, it was just weird because again, it's two episodes shorter mm -hmm. and. Uh, we got so much done in 12 episodes mm -hmm. last season. Like, every episode counted. You had a couple toward the end that were a little bit exposition-heavy, and we didn't like the Big Bismuth stuff because we didn't think it was nearly as funny as they did. No, I don't think Big Bismuth stuff uh, was funny at all. But, and I think Love Sturculeus is like that a little bit this season, where, like, they, they, if not funny, they at least think that's more interesting or endearing or something than I do. I think they think that the baby lobsters are funnier than I do. I do like it when... Well, there when, are funny things say, with them, When though. they say Joan. Every time, I was like, oh, it's kind of, that's adorable. The Joan thing is weird. The Joan thing is weird. Yep. Because uh, Lent is calls herself Joan of Arc, which is fantastic. That's hysterical. Mm. Uh, Arthur's mother's name is Joan. We have an episode title with Joan in it. I assumed it was about Joan of Arc, but that's not. But then it's about Arthur's mom, and I like that she's involved. That's kind of cool that they bring her in, and it's not what you would expect. And she's so much more re reasonable than most TV moms in this kind of show. She's more reasonable than Arthur's mother has ever been. Well, so is God. Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, you remember her in the other live action series? Yes. She commits him. Yep. Uh, in this, she comes in and helps and almost chastises him for not telling her what's going on so she can be helpful. She's like, you just told me about this, and, like, I'm a mom, I'll help out the lobster babies. Mm. That was good. Mm. That was all right. Went on a little long, but that, I, that, that was good. I, but, yeah, how do we not have any correlation between Joan and Joan of Arc? Joan is not a name you hear all the time and stuff. We have it twice, and there's no correlation. I think the mistake, the big mistake with Lobster Achilles is when Lobster Achilles shows up, and I, is it episode one or two? It's, I think it's one. I think it's okay. right away, yeah. I think the bank, the bank heist is right away. Yep. Feels like it's our first adventure in this in this season, and Lobster Cookies looks great. The problem is, I thought I was getting more. Yeah, me too. Where you're like, oh, you made one suit. Oh, you're not as high budget as I as I think you are. Yeah. Um, now that's not to say that they didn't do some really good stunts this season. Uh, Tick running through five walls is awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. some really cool stuff like that. Oh, and, and uh, uh, Tim, Tim Foy Hat Kevin also has superpowers. Oh, yeah! But that felt more like it was under their hat the whole time. Maybe. And I feel like there was... There, 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 were, there was like a clue or two in first season that made us think there was more to him than met the eye. But yeah, when he starts teleporting, that felt more established and set up than the dot thing. Yeah, did. yeah. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Well, because the dot thing isn't yes, at all. Yes. Certainly. So there's no comparison there. Um... We should mention how funny uh, that that speech Overkill has at the end. Yes, because it's brilliant. Yes, it's it's really funny. It's one it's one of the two things that are in the last episode that I think are maybe the two funniest jokes in the show. I have more words. <laughs> he thinks he's gonna die, and then and he's on the phone, and he's and he's talking to, to Dot and Arthur, and he's like, um, and he, he's, and he's like real like, short, and then he, he like leaves. And he's, I have yeah, more yeah. Words. He, he they think he hangs up, and then he goes. Wait a minute! I have more words, and then he goes. You are the people, are in, the my people life. in my life, and that's goodbye. It. That was the, that was the best. The dance off thing does not work at all. At all. Nope. Nope. Doesn't I couldn't believe it, and I've never had that with the show. 
There's never been anything like there's things they think are funnier than I do. There's never anything where I'm almost embarrassed. The for problem it. that was the scene where I, I cringed a little bit. I was like, and it's funnier at the end. It is with the si the silent the silent dance party. And, like, like it's paid off better than it's set up, but I don't like the it. The problem is, this is a feels out of character. This is a more nuanced, realistic show than any any previous uh, uh, yeah, adaptations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's too character driven to throw something like that you know, at Overkill. Over, oh, like I just uh, like Overkill wouldn't do that. I, like it's just it's super out so. of character for him. Um, the other amazing joke in the last episode is uh, is Superians deciding whether or not to turn the Earth backwards. He's like, well, I, I think I could do okay. So if it doesn't work, <laughs> everyone goes into space. Seven it, billion <laughs> people get flung off the planet. But if it does work, I can go back to what everybody loves. Going back in time is, de is definitely that's that's definitely the yeah yeah I I, I can do this I know I can do it I know I can hilarious I uh, and I I thought I might be disappointed if they didn't go through with it I don't think I was I think I was fine with it being interrupted yeah because it's interrupted by more plot stuff like it's more set up for next season I'm more excited for season three like that it's weird because like I want to see what this show does when it gets cosmic yeah this show is here's the thing. We we've been really negative. I don't think the 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 the, the I don't mega. Think we've been really negative. I just have I I just have more criticisms than pie. And most of my positives are a lot of the things I had to say about first season. It's it's still a really smart sharp show. The the meta arc and where they went with a couple of characters is wrong. Uh, but I'm really excited to see season three. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping this was just a smaller season because they didn't want to do like epic to epic. Yeah, which is smart. It's just it's a show that can have downtime seasons, but then. They just set up too much. But you know what? Result. Then make this a more episodic season. Yeah, I, I would have been fine with that. Maybe, maybe have like a couple smaller arcs or like something like that. And it's really easy to do the Flag 5 stuff in the background, especially if it turns out that there's not as much of a conspiracy as in season one. Like, it was just that doctor guy, and it's not the whole organization. And, like, surprisingly, the Flag 5 is real and above board, and Tick and Arthur are actually... Like, uh, they, they don't end up with a shattering disillusionment that they join the Aegis like I thought they would. Now, by the end, I'm a little bit confused about whether the Flag Five is going to continue to be in operation. I have no idea what's happening with the Flag <laughs> Five. On a first viewing, I have no idea what's happening at the end of this, because they, they make it sound like the Flag Five's not a thing anymore, but they only lost one member. Yeah, they can just replace him. Well, her. I mean, they, yeah, can, yeah. That's what, sorry, yeah. they can just replace her. They yeah. got other superheroes. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why the Tick and Arthur don't seem to be on the team anymore. It's almost like, and this is and, and Dot could easily apply for membership or Overkill. Yeah, he's killing people, but Dot could easily apply. But for he membership. was on the Flag Five originally, and if he came on and she was his sidekick, just like in the original, he yes. was the sidekick. That would of, be great. Yeah, um, but it's. I also don't think the original Flag Five was Aegis based. I think they were I just guess a group I'm not of superheroes. Sure. Yeah, maybe. I maybe don't know they if they were Aegis based. That's a good point. Uh, but but here it's like Sheila's. It, it, it's it's like it's like uh, it, it's like the movie Avengers. Like Sheila's putting together a team. Yes, but it it seems like think about this in the world. Okay, they announce the the return of the superhero team, and then the next day it's just not a thing. Yeah. I don't get that. I and, don't, like, why? Because the whole agency wasn't... No, it was, it was no just they got rid of the one got person rid of that guy. and the villain that was on the team. And then the guy that's running the show, the actual Nick Fury of, of, of the group, we thought died, and he didn't, and he's still in charge. You know, we could have gotten comedy mileage out of them that we didn't do at all. What's that? Other applicants? Yeah. Everyone we met it was on been, the team! It would have been really easy to just uh, repeat Deadpool 2, though. It's maybe a good thing they didn't do that, but... Yeah. yeah. You but can have to do it as a montage, I guess. Or you do it, like, once or twice an episode. Like, you just cut to someone, like, like applying or something. Uh, speaking of Overkill, real quick, uh, I thought that bit toward the beginning about um, uh, where, where, like, uh, he had... Where Overkill had his pact with the Tick, where uh, he couldn't kill, and then Dot was able to renege that. I thought that was, that was kind of great. Mm-hmm. She 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 unwished uh, takes she, wish. she unwished it because he also owed her his li owed her his life and so she was able to say uh, no you can kill people now but then I don't know if she would do that I I don't I don't know if she would do that 
Uh, and also... Now that, that I'm thinking about that, it's funny, but I don't know if she would do that. But it also leads to the, um... The, the, the... This feels more PG. Or PG-13. We have to talk about that, so, yeah. So he gets to start killing, and we never get a kill scene like we do in Season 1. The first season... I, I don't know what the actual rating is, but it has to be mature because it's got multiple F bombs. It's TV, there, are, there are a couple of right. There are a couple of uh, like. Really I'm not rough, saying it's the rating, but I'm saying it's about that. It's, that level. It, but it has to be because it's got multiple F bombs and it's got uh, it's got blood and stuff. This season has none of that. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like that. Where like usually, if anything, you go from more wholesome to darker and harder for kids to watch. Like, it's easier to show your kids the first season of Buffy than it is to show them five. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things like that. Heck, Harry Potter is like that. Mm -hmm. And the tick is the opposite of that so far. It's almost like they it's thought they should sell season themselves two. on that in season one. Yeah. To like, get people interested, but like, this is the show they really wanted to make. And that's just weird. Sort of like selling the Orville in comedy, and then and not every episode has to be comedy. Your kids can't watch this. Like, if... Yeah. You can't just jump in at season two. Mm -hmm. Season one's too important. Yeah, and also, dare I say, kind of a masterpiece, and, like, you can't show your kids the best of it. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. So, yeah, that's rough. Uh, the last thing I want to bring up is Thrakazog! Oh, I'm so excited about Thrakazog. Um, so, the, Ben and Lynn said before the season that we were going to get uh, more familiar faces. One. And then we didn't get any, and then at the at the end... We should we should also know we both thought that, that, that the Duke was going to be Chairface Chippendale, because we talked about that. We talked about that guy doesn't have thought, a head. We thought there was every possibility yeah. of Chairface. Yeah, yeah. And I still think this show could do Chairface. I, if, I do too. If this show will do Thrackers all it can do Chairface. Mm. And big cosmic season, the next thing you do is Gangsters again. Mm. Yeah, 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 I see yeah. them doing that, sure. In fact, I could even see them doing multiple characters from the comics and doing a gangster gang, like doing, doing like, uh, like kind of a... Uh, um, who, who am I trying to think of? A Dick Tracy season? Yeah. Uh, where you have, like, uh, Chrome Dome and, like, the guy with uh, ears with, like, little raisins and Dean. And, and Zipper Neck. And the Zipper Neck, yeah. Uh, all of that. Just Shareface's whole crew. Mm. Um, and most of those are comic book characters. Mm. Like, they showed up in the show, but they're comic first, so we mm. can use them. Um, they, they don't have the rights to do the Fox characters, which is why you'll never see American Made again, and you'll never see, uh, you know, El Seed and characters like that. I don't mm. think El Seed is comic book. I think he's... Or Batman I, Well. I could be wrong, but, but Batman Well and, and characters like that. Uh, but anyway, so... Oh, yeah, cause, cause, well, Batman, Batman Well is obviously live action, but they don't have the rights to those characters either. No, they don't. No, they don't. So they would have to do like a third iteration yeah. they made up yet another... Which is what I thought we were heading towards. I thought we were heading towards Overkill was, was this was this Batman Well, Deflator Mouse, and Miss Lint was going to be the American Maid. Well, uh, I've said this before, but remember, Captain Liberty and Lint's names are both Janet. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that, but that's... Mm -hmm. Really interesting that they're both named Janet, mm -hmm. um, which led a lot of credibility to your theory that she was going to become a member of the Flag Five, uh, and or or that she was going to be a, a superhero. I guess she didn't say Flag Five because we didn't think there was going to be a second mm -hmm. Flag Five. Um, by the way, I meant to say earlier about the whole Flag Five thing that I guess it is kind of nice that we gave Arthur a break and he got to live out his dream and it didn't come crashing down on him mm. like he's maybe been through enough like i like like i i, I don't want obviously as as i always say you shouldn't protect your darlings but like wouldn't that just bring the twitch back wouldn't that just make him lose it lose himself like mm -hmm. maybe it's okay that we threw him a bone and the flag five thing worked out and he okay. met maybe the perfect girl for him Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. She's great. Yeah, yeah, she that, is. That whole thing is awesome. Okay. So, uh, Thracker Zog is a character that starts in the comics and then is uh, reinvented for an animated series episode called The Tick vs. the Uncommon Cold, where he is turned green, made smaller, and given a British accent. And, and, he's, uh, and he's just like an annoying roommate. And he's got an annoying roommate uh, that uh, they both try to observe uh, good roommate et etiquette. Uh, this is my side of the living room, and that is your side of the living room. And must you drink straight out of the milk carton? It's disgusting. Uh, but Fracker Zog in the comics is uh, bigger and slimier and scarier, and uh, I think he still talks, um, but uh, he's more boisterous, and uh, it looks like we're doing more of that version. Uh, so he's coming out of the black hole from It looks very Rathbone. good yeah, yeah, it dies. His tentacles coming out of he's got like a black hole heart. I, as it was happening, I resisted saying Thracker Zog because I wasn't sure if I was right about it. And then that's why I freaked out because I was like, Thracker Zog. Now, I don't know why he's saying his own name. 
I so, so that you that. could have that moment. Yeah, just me. Because yeah. I don't know if anybody else on the planet was like, oh my god, it's Thrakerzog! Uh, but I am. I'm very excited about it. Uh, Thrakerzog is one of my favorite Dick villains, and uh, he's he's way up there. So um, that's cool. Uh, it's I didn't expect that. I mean, it's nuts that they're doing that. Mm. Um, and I think we can expect a cosmic season next next season because we set that up at the same time and the as, thing. as uh, the the uh, you know not Kryptonians showing up. Because we find out Spirian's a fugitive. Yep. From a hundred years ago. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, that's everything I have. Do yeah. you want to mention anything else? No, I think uh, yeah. Once again, I mean, it's it's great, but it's not as great. That's I would say my it's review. good, not great. I don't know what happened to my thing. I tried here. Uh, or okay, super super entertaining. Entertaining. Like, like, yeah, no, this yeah. is. Yeah. It's it, it's it's one of those rare cases where the. The pieces are good, but the whole is not. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Because I don't. There's never a moment where I don't enjoy it. Uh, even even as we as we start moving through the season, getting closer, I'm like, so wait, is this just the plot? And I wasn't. I the only time I'm bored, or the only time I'm not really enjoying it is I I, I think I think we do the baby thing too long, and like I'm waiting for Ticket and Arthur to go do something. Yeah. Um. But uh, no, it's it, it, it's good. Well, folks, thanks a lot for watching. Sure, appreciate it. And uh, we will see you again uh, for end the Endgame uh, review. And I don't know if there will be anything in between. I am technically on hiatus right now, but there have been some major things that have come out that uh, we've had to pop back in and talk to you guys about. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Leave your comments. In the meantime, I was Captain Logan. And I was Eric. And we'll see you again later on.